In September 2021, when Mount Elbrus, the highest peak in Europe, was receiving an influx of domestic mountaineers amid the COVID pandemic, a tragedy occurred near the mountain's peak, leaving the entire Elbrus community in shock. While a group of Russian mountaineers was attempting to summit Elbrus, which is known for its technically easy climbs, the weather conditions of the mountain turned on them. A brutal snowstorm caught them just a few meters below the summit, leading to a rescue operation in the most difficult conditions. This devastating incident made international news, and many wondered if it was just an unfortunate accident or if there was more to the story. When a group of 19 climbers were at an altitude of over 5,000 meters... Or Mount Elbrus, not just the highest peak in Russia, but the whole of Europe, is a dormant volcano nearly 2.5 million years old and is situated in the southwestern region of Russia. Rising to 5,642 meters, Elbrus is part of the Caucasus Range and remains blanketed in snow throughout the year. The mountain has two summits, a west summit and an east summit, with the western summit being the highest. With its mild slopes and dome-shaped summit, Elbrus is a well-known destination for climbers and hikers in the summer months and is a popular ski resort in the winter. What makes the climbing experience at Elbrus unique and interesting is the cable car system and a snowcat for transporting climbers up to higher altitudes, as well as a set of huts designed for climbers to take rest, such as barrel huts situated at an altitude of 3,962 meters. Although the Elbrus is not considered a technically challenging ascent, the mountain has several life-threatening hazards, including harsh weather conditions with unexpected snowstorms that reduce visibility to near zero, icy temperatures, icy slopes, and altitude sickness that can affect climbers attempting to summit and make the climb more difficult and dangerous. Elbrus is considered one of the deadliest peaks, although the routes are relatively easy compared to other major peaks. Each year, an average of 30 people lose their lives attempting to conquer the mountain. In 2021, with the closure of international borders due to the COVID pandemic, Elbrus saw a surge in domestic tourism. It was the month of September in the same year when a group of local mountaineers decided to head towards Mount Elbrus, but there awaited them a terrible fate at an altitude of more than 5,000 meters. The group consisted of 19 hikers, all from 11 different regions of Russia, with ages ranging from 32 to 47. The group was led by two main guides, Ilya Chukov and Anton Nikiforov, with support from two assistants, Tolan Kipkiv and Igor Dankov. According to Elbrus Guide, the company that organized this commercial expedition, the guides who accompanied the group were professionals. However, the same could not be said of the hikers who had very little mountain experience. On the night of September 23, 2021, a team of mountaineers led by the company Elbrus Guide set off for Mount Elbrus. The team initially consisted of 23 members, including assistants and guides. Just before the start of the climb, three hikers decided to withdraw from the group. The remaining 20 people continued their trek to the top of the mountain. Denis Alimov, who was responsible for organizing the climb, later stated that they began the trek at night because of more favorable weather conditions. Although it was not perfect, it was the only feasible possibility for them to attempt the summit in the next five days. Although a strong wind was blowing, the weather was deemed stable. The group successfully reached the plateau of the summit without any major issues. Just 100 meters below the summit, the weather conditions changed dramatically as the air pressure dropped and the wind grew stronger. Meanwhile, one of the members, 36-year-old Anna Makarova, who was described as being in perfect physical shape, began to feel unwell in the extreme conditions, so it was decided to bring her down. Igor Donkov, one of the guide's assistants, took charge of lowering Makarova down the mountain while the rest of the group continued their ascent toward the top. However, nearly 10 to 15 minutes later, the situation took a turn for the worse. Suddenly, the air pressure dropped further. Wind speeds of 40 to 70 meters per second began to blow up the mountain, and a violent storm with heavy snowfall broke out. Resultantly, the visibility was reduced to half a meter, and temperatures dropped to minus 20 degrees Celsius. In an attempt to escape the terrible blizzard, the group began to descend before reaching the peak, but it could not stand a chance against the raging storm. During the descent, the climbers lost their way, slipped and slid down approximately 100 meters over the ice. Despite their best efforts, they were unable to secure an ice axe in the ice. On the other hand, 
Anna Makarova's condition did not seem to be improving. Igor Donkov gave her tea and ammonia in an attempt to give her some relief. But despite these efforts, she died in his arms within an hour of descending from the plateau to the saddle. Igor waited for the group until 3 p.m. and tried to contact the Ministry of Emergency Situations and the snowcat at the assault camp. However, after failing to establish any communication, he decided to descend on his own. He was the first to inform the coordinator about the tragedy. Upon receiving the message, the coordinator, Elena Alimova, contacted the deputy officer of the Ministry of Emergency Situations and informed him about the presence of a group of climbers at the top of the mountain. In response, the Ministry of Emergency Situations launched a rescue operation. However, the freezing cold, low visibility, and strong gusts of wind going up the mountain made the rescue operation a difficult task. On the upper part of the mountain at an altitude of over 5,000 meters, the group of climbers was still struggling through the brutal snowstorm. The group faced another setback when one of their members broke his leg, which further slowed down the movement of the group. After waiting two hours for help to arrive, the group eventually decided to carry the injured member down themselves without further delay. Considering the severity of the circumstances, the guides decided to split the group into fast and slow moving groups in order to prevent mass freezing. On one hand, the delay proved to be beneficial in stabilizing the injured member. However, for the other two members of the group, it turned out to be fatal. The two members died due to hypothermia. Later during their descent, Two more climbers of the group lost consciousness and were later transported to the Garabasha station, which is located at an elevation of 3,900 meters. Unfortunately, they could not regain their consciousness and passed away. The remaining climbers, who sustained several injuries including frostbite and fractured bones, were eventually rescued by a team comprising 69 members. The rescue operation conducted in the harsh conditions lasted until 11 o'clock the next morning. 11 injured individuals were transferred to a nearby hospital in Nalchik, with two of them being admitted to the intensive care unit. Three individuals who luckily remained unharmed refused medical care and sought refuge in a hotel located in the vicinity. The five mountaineers, including four females and one male, who lost their lives on this tragic journey, were 39 years old Vyacheslav Borisov, 32 years old Yelena Nesterova, 40 years old Anastasia Zhugulina, and 32 years old Irina, along with the previously deceased Anna Makarova. Later, the guide, Anton Nikiforov, when interviewed in the hospital, revealed that strong wind was blowing that day and suggested they could have turned back earlier. However, he added that they had previously ascended the mountain in similar weather conditions without any issues. In the aftermath of this deadly incident, a criminal case was filed for providing services that did not meet health and safety standards. The Russian Investigative Committee detained Denis Alimov, the organizer and owner of the Elbrus Guide Company, four days after the tragic deaths of the Russian climbers. According to the IC, Alimov pleaded guilty and made a full confession. He admitted that he had made a mistake about the month and weather when planning the climb. Therefore, he remained under arrest for two months while his company continued to put together groups for future climbs in 2022. The tragedy on Elbrus soon grabbed worldwide attention which on one hand saddened people all around the world, and on another hand, raised questions regarding negligence on part of the organizers of this climb and the guides. The president of the Federation of Mountaineering, Rock Climbing and Sports Tourism of the KBR, Abdul Kalim Elmazov, stated that the group lacked any professional guides who could accurately assess the challenges and difficulties associated with ascending and descending under especially difficult conditions. He further emphasized that leading people up a mountain in bad weather conditions invariably exposes them to danger. In addition, he remarked that the number of guides for such a large group of people, many of whom lacked significant climbing experience, is quite alarming and is one of the major contributors to this tragedy. Also, some people noted that the two trainees assisting the two lead guides lacked experience in terms of both temperament and skills to cope with the difficult circumstances they encountered. Moreover, it is also believed that the guide's failure to communicate with rescue services earlier also played a major role in climbers' fatalities, which could have been prevented. The fatal incident sent shockwaves throughout the climbing community and drew attention to the risks and dangers inherent in climbing Europe's highest peak. Climbing Elbrus, or any mountain, requires adequate preparation, training, and attention to the dangers of weather conditions, 
and altitude sickness. Thanks for watching this story. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on your notification bell to stay updated on more similar videos. We would love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to share your comments below. Until next time.